All right, my friends, you have entered the Dead Website episode. This is episode 404. Is that still a thing that people know? I, I believe so. I went to, I hit, I was trying to go to my uh, college website instead of www. I hit QQQ. <laughs> that didn't go anywhere. Um, I thought it 404 Um I know. I'm just wondering, like, I get it from us kind of growing up with the web and it was much more prominent when there was a oh, website no. found. And I'm like, yeah, do you still get the like error 404 showing up? <laughs> And do people recognize that? Um, oh, yeah. It just says, hmm, can't reach this page. There's not yeah. really a I don't know. There. But, yeah, era 404. Uh, page not found. Um, episode has not been found. Exactly. Um, be fun to do a pregnant pause. People are like, wait, what happened? <laughs> yeah. So we are here. Episode 404. I am the professor. I play games. And over there is Anthony the dev. He plays games and also makes them. Um, I, God damn it, still have your game. <laughs> it's on my entertainment center here i need to mail this fucking yeah thing to you um i will do that um but we this week there's i don't know there's not been a lot, ton of like big news so we're going to talk about what we've been playing and kind of anything else that crops up um i'm glad that we're recording a little later in the week because man i've had more time to play super mario wonder and i have been having an amazing time um with that game i've been playing with my daughter uh, we've been playing co-op together, and we play co-op. Once my daughter discovered you can play online, uh, we turn the online mode on, and we've been playing online, and it's been almost like Journey-esque. <laughs> nice. Um, where, and some people uh, compared it to Dark Souls, um, where you know there are people, I guess, in Dark Souls that are inhabiting the world as ghosts, and they can, you know, they leave notes for you or whatever, right? Yeah. Um, I guess that was in Elden Ring as well. Yeah, it's the asynchronous kind of multiplayer stuff. Yeah, but this is synchronous. Those they're there with you, um, so you're able to help each other. Like there's like the oh my god, whoever made this game is like took the best of Mario World, uh, Mario Three, and then whatever crazy motherfuckers did with Mario Maker. <laughs> okay, there's some like insidious levels in the special world specifically. Um, but some of those really hard challenging levels are made easier with the online mode where you die and you turn into a ghost and you have six seconds or five seconds to either hit another player or hit their quote unquote standee, which is like a, you probably saw it in the videos for the game, like a stand up plywood or cardboard cutout of your character in different poses. And if you touch it, you come back to life. You don't lose a life. You just come back. So for example, I was playing a, a level that is there's lava coming up and there's um basically walls they have to jump off of and they um disappear the walls just blink out of existence so you're trying to climb up the walls there's not really anywhere to stand you're just wall jumping up and up and up and if the lava catches you um then you have six seconds to touch someone or something um or you die whereas if you had online mode off you would just die so with online mode on if i die but someone else was is ahead of me or they put their standee ahead of me, I can actually zip up halfway through the course as a ghost and come back to life further up the course. So mm-hmm. it's almost like a difficulty modifier where it, you can you could skip parts of the course doing that um, and help each other. You can give items to each other. Um, you can put your standees in places where hidden blocks are um, because the standees attach to a platform. So if you're on a block that's hidden, it'll attach to the block. In your world, in my world, I don't see the block. I just see your standee, and I think that has to be attached to something, so you can jump up and hit it. So it oh, kind of gives you interesting. Yeah, yeah. So you're basically leaving clues for other people about where hidden stuff is, where the secret exits are, um, and you can turn it all off if you want to do it by yourself. But the on, we've been having such a joy with the online because we're just like with people, and my daughter's very excited to be like with Daisy. Oh, there's Daisy. Let's follow Daisy, or da- let's help Daisy. Daisy will help us, or whatever. Um, but then you end up completing the level together because you're helping each other out. Um, and then, you know, you finish the level together and then you move on and you don't see that person again, which is okay. like journey, which yep. when you you know left that level, you, you were with someone else, basically. Um, and you get heart points. I don't know what you do with those things. It, or it might just be like a, you know, Reddit fake Internet point kind of thing. We're like, oh, I have 6000 hearts. Cool. I help people a lot. But more you help people, the more you're. Um, your hearts um, expand. Um, and it's this game is full of secrets. <laughs> the wonderful... Yeah, I've heard that. Yeah, so it really is. So I'm going to stop and see if you have questions. And Yeah, so, all right. 
to the first question because I did know it had the multipliers. The couch based multiplayer where you're all yep. there in the same level. Yes. There's the online multiplayer where you're playing the same level, just not with each other necessarily. Like you each have your own instance of the level. Exactly. And what you do can kind of go between the instances, so you can mm-hmm. see like the ghosts and stuff. But it's still you're kind of playing a part, but together. Um, yes, exactly. And then you just answered my question that you can be co-op, couch co-op, but fill other spots with online people. Yes. Okay. Yep. And um, I I haven't noticed if it's uh, limited to four because couch co-op is, but I feel like yeah. I've seen more than two other people when my daughter and I are playing. So. Um, in a level so maybe more than four could be five maybe it was yeah um so that's kind of that's a good answer there you mentioned journey that's been brought up at my work discussion a lot that it's very similar to that it feels like that when you're playing an online thing you're helping each other but you don't really have a way to communicate um or very limited communication yeah you basically have like four emotes that you can use so if you spam your emote they spam their emote back and you're like okay we're communicating yeah. Uh, so, that's crazy. Like, I did not expect that out of this, out of this game. Uh, I didn't. I didn't either. I didn't expect it to be my favorite part of the game. Like, I, uh, I read that they did this type of multiplayer because the way that the frame data worked in doing online, where you're in the same instance, was just it didn't allow for pre- precision platforming together. But this way, you don't need to sync up the frames. Like, they could be, you know several frames off and it doesn't matter um because they're doing their own thing but i did not expect this to be my favorite part of the game um like i leave it on when i'm playing at night by myself uh because i you know i think i've talked about this many times i think um once when i was talking about about no man's sky at the very beginning where i'm just not super drawn to like games where i'm alone like if Mm -hmm. i can have an option to have a party or you know have a group with me it just makes me feel like I'm not alone. Um, and turning the online mode on is exactly that. I feel like I'm playing with people and it's, I, I literally am. Um, yeah. And it's just, man, that you're sacrificing, not finding some of the secrets yourself, but it's, that's a fine trade off for me. Yeah. I, that doesn't seem like a huge problem for the game. Really? Um, no, I, there's so many secrets and the yeah. likelihood of someone showing you all the secrets in the area is, is not going to happen. So and yeah, eventually and it should, it feels collaborative. It doesn't feel like, Oh, they're just um, showing you everything. You still have to figure out what their clues are saying at times as well. Um, I assume it's not always like, Oh, a super apparent. Um, yeah, exactly. Well, and there's, um, the way that the, because okay so in the lead up to mario wonder we've been playing like mario 3d world and mm-hmm. a couple other mario games where playing co-op with my family has been a nightmare <laughs> you're pushing each other off cliffs <laughs> it's just like I've, you know, I've heard the stories <laughs> yeah. i've heard the stories you're almost like griefing each other you know and you could grieve each other in an online situation like that there's there's no griefing here like all it is is cooperative you, you can't really do anything to fuck with people unless you like put standees in dumb places and that's, that's about it. Um, so it really feels collaborative where you're helping each other, you know, giving items to each other, making sure that you're in a position where the ghost can get to you so the other person can continue. Um, it's helped my daughter and I get through some difficult areas where she's been able to ride on me as Yoshi um, or uh, hit me as she's a ghost and it kind of slingshots her forward past a gap she couldn't get across. Um and we've been doing some pretty challenging levels that she's been able to hang with through the end. Um, every once in a while, she'll jump on my back and just let me do it. But um, yeah, dude, it's so fun. And that's not even, we're not even getting into like the actual gameplay other than the, the online so far. It's yeah, fucking awesome. I don't know if you've seen much of it, but. Uh, I tr- I'll just enough to know like, yeah, I'm going to play this. Um, don't know exactly when, but. I want to play it. It looks really, really neat. Um, the digital foundry thing that came out on it was yeah, I saw pretty that. neat. And they're like talking through the animations and stuff and the keyframing and really showing off the difference between Wonder 
and like the new Super Mario games and how they they characters are animated, how they hold poses more, and they're like, no, it feels a lot more like the old two D Mario's. Um, and the momentum thing that yeah. I never knew, but now that I see it in comparison between new Super Mario Brothers Wii U or whatever and this one, it's like, oh my god, that's it. That's why it's not as fun it's not as precise like this one mario doesn't have as much momentum so it kind of stops more you can stick a little bit better yeah Yeah. exactly exactly um which is fascinating um to get that detailed which i really want to know what their their pillars were going in to make this game design pillars on all right we're making a new a new mario game 2d mario game um it's 3d but in the 2d plane and we don't want it to be new Super Mario Brothers. And just going, like, where do they even start with that? And clearly they started by going back to, like, world and places like that and be like, what haven't we done in a long time? And and draw it, from that or whatever team was working on this. I don't even know what team it would be. Well, I saw I saw a tweet. Um, no, no, excuse me. I heard of a tweet um, on Kind of Funny Games where they said, Four of the okay, so Mario Brothers one, and I don't know if this is true, but this is what the tweet said. Mario Brothers one was made by five people. Four of those five people worked on Wonder. Obviously, more people did too. But what? <laughs> that's what they reported. I have not looked into it because I heard it today. I think Super Mario um, Brothers. Let let us let us see. Yeah, I mean, it, at the time, that would totally make sense. The team was super small back in the, for the first one. I think that, for that first one sense. back yeah. in like. Mm-hmm. 85. 85, yeah. yeah. Um, plot development. Um, da, 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 da. I mean, Miyamoto was doing a bunch of stuff there. I wonder how much Miyamoto was involved. He was wonder. because they had they had talked about the um, design for the elephant, and he walked in and was like, I hate that. <laughs> 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 Please redo that. <laughs> so certainly advising. Yeah. Um, but it was Tezuya or someone who was doing the directing, maybe? Yeah, it was originally the game was designed by Shigeru Miyamoto and Taka, Takashi uh, Tezuka. Tezuka, that's it, yeah. Um, it was programmed, had two programmers, two artists. Oh, Miyamoto was an artist for it. Mm-hmm. Tezuka was an artist for it. Honestly, five people might be true. I yeah. Might. It, mm-hmm. And Koji Kondo as composer. It really could just be that small group of people. Um, so four of the five people that worked on of those people you named worked on this one. It's I, crazy. It feels true because uh, there's so many um, references to Mario One, Two, Three, and World. Okay. Like the old, like there's music snippets from World or Three. There's um, times where you're going through the overworld and all of a sudden an airship appears out of nowhere and it's like the airship from uh like the end of world one from super mario brothers that kind yeah. of automatic scroll airship where shit's happening um and it's just like that's just like a modern interpretation of that thing um the one thing that really does stand out as kind of sucking is the boss battles like mm. Those airships have the same boss battle where it's just like this machine spitting robots at you that you just have to get to the top of the machine and stomp on its red button on its head once, which is exactly like the thing you do with Bowser at the end of the castles in Mario 1, where you go under him or above him and hit the fucking axe or whatever. Yep. Um, Uh, Not a lot of complexity there. No, and it feels... It sucks, but it feels deliberate in that, like, Mm -hmm. that's what happened in Mario one but it got a little more complex right to get past bowser each time and that's what's happening here too but that's kind of it and then bowser jr is the same mini boss yeah that has variations too which is the same thing as like boom boom or whatever um it really it's it feels like a remix <laughs> of okay. those games and you have the secret level exits from super mario world that lead to different areas um yeah man yeah, it's like a um, nostalgic Tez- hit. Tezka? Mm-hmm. Yeah, he was the producer. Producer, of okay. okay. I mean, he's been at Nintendo since 84. Or yeah. 80, yeah. Um, after graduating at Osaka University of Arts and joined Nintendo because Nintendo was in Osaka. Um, That's awesome. And he worked on Mario and Legend of Zelda. <laughs> um, what a cool career. 
Yeah, he's just been at Nintendo since. Like, he's pretty much on everything that Nintendo has done. He's at least in some way, shape, or form involved. Um, I'm trying to see if there's... I mean, Miyamoto's not listed as a designer, though, on it. But, I mean, he he's in a weird spot. I don't remember what his title is at Nintendo now. It's yeah. something um, yeah. really ridiculous, I would say. Yeah. Um, Everything I've seen is like he advised on some things, but wasn't really. Uh, yeah, he, he can pretty much do whatever the hell he yes, wants to exactly. do. Exactly. Um, and be involved or as little as much as he wants. Um, that, uh, what did, he had a really funny term that he was. His, his title was hilarious. Um, I mean, yeah, he just listed as general producer on most games, but I thought yeah. there was a f- more funny title he had. But he was like, eh, whatever. You can just he can come around and say, "I hate that. <laughs> Fix it." Yeah, exactly. That's that good. elephant. Mm. <laughs> um, um, well, and the powers are interesting. There's the fire flower, obviously. Yeah. Um, but then there's like a, the, the drill, the bubble, and the elephant. And those are the only ones that I've seen. I don't know if there are others. I I had heard from reviews that there were others. They didn't want to spoil, but I'm. I'm like yeah. halfway through the game. I haven't seen anything else. <laughs> um, but I mean, I didn't get to drill till halfway through the game. So mm, yeah, I, I don't um, know. But those powers are useful in earlier levels in almost like a Metroidvania kind of way okay. to open up different pathways or, you know, go get... back. Yeah, try exactly. it again. Mm-hmm. Yep. And the levels are short. They're not too long. Um, I feel like they're much shorter than like a, a world level or a Mario three level, to be honest. Um, there was a level in the desert that resembled the angry sun. There wasn't okay. an angry sun, but there was something. I can't remember what it was, but it just like there's so many just like references to old enemies, like the pokies are back, or you know, there's Wiggler on roller skates, which is kind of cool. I'm wa- I'm honestly waiting for Wart to show up somewhere. <laughs> to be honest, that's um, crazy. Yeah, and then those wonder flowers just change everything. Like one turns you into shadows, kind of like Donkey Kong Country. A couple of those levels. Um, uh, change you into a bug that's like flies like catapults through the air um just changes the mechanics of the level in so many different really bizarre ways that you're just pl- you know playing yeah. the same level in a different way so so uh shiro uh mari was the pro- um was the director of the game and uh had this thing of saying Mari desired to recreate the sense of secrets and mystery that have been present in the original Super Mario Brothers for a modern audience. Nailed it. <laughs> so yeah, I mean, that was like a, a specific thing that they were trying to do. Um, I think of secrets more from World. I know one had like the secret war pipe in level two. Yeah. Um, were there others? Probably, but. And yeah, the the flower stuff that I've seen, like I saw that in a little bit of stream, but mostly in the digital founder video where they're like you look at how the world changes whenever you uh use the wonder flower um and it's crazy how much is in the levels in that regard yeah it, it like changes. each level is multiple levels really Ex- that's exactly right and even if you don't hit the flower there are multiple routes in some levels um and then one thing i haven't talked about is um i'm smiling so much playing this game like there are just things that are funny or interesting. The flowers say interesting things. Um, there's been two levels. Like, man, I don't even want to spoil it. Like, there's just a second level in the whole game does something with the wonder flower that just is such a small, fun, bizarre thing, um, and then it does it again later in a different way. That's just like, who thought of this? This is fucking wild. My wife walked in and she just started laughing. She's like, what the heck is happening? I was like, you're like, I don't know. Mm, cool yep. stuff. Mm-hmm. But... It's it's yeah. So I'm super, super pleased. I've been excited for this game for a while. It's certainly, this is in my top five somewhere. I don't know where it's going to land. I'm eventually. Sure. Um, but I mean, Mario is my jam. I love platforming and, and I feel like the, Mario folks are like, okay, in the last six or seven years, like there have been a lot of indie 2D platformers that have come through and have been really good. Celeste um, is one that comes to mind, you know, maybe Super Meat Boy before that. Um, and they're like, no, no, we're the platformers. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Let's take the best of Mario Galaxy, or not Galaxy. Let's take the best of Mario Maker craziness and some of the earlier games and yeah. And get back there a little bit. Mm-hmm. That's cool though. Um, 
It's cool that they're taking the time and um, getting back to this a little bit, uh, especially at the end of the what we assume is the end of the Switch life cycle. Um, I don't think there'll be another Mario on this. Mm, on no, this I don't think so. Yeah, Switch. Um, so it's an interesting way to go out because when it was first revealed, it's like, oh, that's cool. It just seems like, well, you're not going to do another Galaxy on here, right? Not a Galaxy. Um, Odyssey. Yeah. Odyssey on here, and that seems to be like the premier thing. So, oh, fine, we'll just do a smaller 2D thing. Um, but it seems like it was just really good um, and not not kind of just a holdover piece of of software. It's like, no, no, this stands on its own. It doesn't need to be thought of as the here's a little Mario thing because you won't get another one for a, a while. Um, yeah, it's almost like the, the, the flip of we should be getting ports of the Wii U games right now. And instead yeah. this came out several years ago where this should have come out in the middle. And this is like a the, the end of the Switch life cycle is amazing. There's this. Next month is the remake of Super Mario RPG. Yep. We're getting that Princess Peach game. We're getting um, the remake of Thousand Year Door. Um God, <laughs> this all this all hints that the the whatever the next switch is is backwards compatible oh, completely. Yeah. Like they're not putting these games out to just not be played at the end of the the life cycle. They want to use them uh, going forward. Um, yeah, there's too many amazing games to be yeah. like, okay, you can't. This, is a, this isn't now. a Wii U situation where they're like, oh no, <laughs> just abort. <laughs> Um, yeah, we're going to stop putting games on this system at all and waiting, yeah. holding them all for Switch. <laughs> yeah. Um, <clears throat> so, I mean, that's true. I feel like that has to be coming soon and some announcement on that. I could see them doing... I mean, okay. So, first of all, do we both agree that we think it's coming out in 2024? Yeah, I think it's at. I think it's going to be holidays, October-ish. Yeah, that's what I was going to ask. Next, you think oh, be... A year from now is my expectation. Yeah. That's my expectation as well because of the number of Switch games that are lined up through summer. So, yeah, um, yeah, I and agree. I think they'll be a little slow on their first party stuff after spring because I think they announce in spring, and then they want to hold some big stuff for the launch. But I do think backwards compatibility is there. So, um, but I don't think they've have they announced a lot of stuff past the end of the fiscal year. For them, I don't think so. Just Luigi's Mansion for next summer, which is yeah. that past? That seems to be right. That would be past. It would be a yeah. March thirty first. Um, anything after March thirty first. So I could see that. I could see it being a little bit of a, not I'd say a dry spell, but a little bit lighter going mm-hmm. into the fall and then dropping. I don't even know anymore. Like they put a Mario out. They put. Tears of the Kingdom out. I mean, okay, fine. It's Wind Waker HD. We'll just keep saying it because it's going to happen at some it, point, right? It is. They've got it locked and loaded. I mean, Kitten it's got to happen, that. right? They, they have it. It's just they're going to put it out when it makes business sense, which is not now. So yeah, uh, I mean, a new launch of a new Switch that seems like it would be good business. It would just sense. it would pad the um, launch window. You know, they've yeah. got it locked and loaded, like Metroid Prime Four, Mario, whatever. Um, and then, you know, a couple of Switch ports people have been fucking begging for. <laughs> I mean, know? Amazon til- still tells me whenever the, uh, when Metroport 4's uh, date changes. <laughs> Was it the end of 2024 now? Yes. And you've had it since 2017? As soon as it was announced. And You've see. had that pre-order longer than my daughter's been alive? <laughs> yes, I'm probably. Uh, let's see. Let's <laughs> see. Not yet shipped. Yeah, it's currently it's arriving Tuesday, December thirty first. Um, mm, of course, uh, I pre-ordered it June twenty first, twenty seventeen. Wow, mere days. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yep. That's crazy. <laughs> it's the longest pre-order I've ever had. Yeah, man, can't let that go. You gotta frame that. I mean, we're past six years. It's pretty good. I can't believe they ever even announced this thing then. <laughs> At this Seriously, point. that far ahead, boy. Oh, I mean, um, they they clearly were going to release something, and then that got canned. So, yeah. mm-hmm. well, they looked at what that external studio was doing. They're like, "Fuck no, nope, can't do this." <laughs> Out, um, back to retro. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, have you played the Metroid Prime Remastered? Uh, no. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I neither. really, sh- I really <laughs> should. I'm like, I have that. I have, um. 13 Sentinels still to play. Mm-hmm, yep. 
There's something else on there I still had to play. Mario vs. Rabbids 2, which you got me. Oh, like, yeah. <laughs> I'm like, I have games to play, for sure. I have to get my Switch back. Um, From your child. My, yeah, uh, and because it's, it's pretty much permanently just on the main TV now, because my daughter is, like, deep into all the Zelda games now. Um, your daughter's amazing. She this just jumps between them all. <laughs> She's just like, yeah, what are you playing today? And Breath of the Wild. Uh, next day, uh, Age of Calamity. And then Tears of the Kingdom, and maybe some of all of it, depending on the day. Yep. Um, she's you know in this. deep. She's in real deep. Um, That's awesome. This is a great, great excuse for you to be like, well, I guess I gotta get that OLED. Although it's end of cycle, so I don't know. That wouldn't do the it right time. I, I'm just waiting. I don't need an OLED. Um, yeah. So I guess I can actually say this uh, here because the, all the stuff about Nintendo. Uh, and there, they have a Nintendo Museum opening in right. March of next year. Is the plan? Um, so, sounds right. I'm going to Japan in May, so <gasps> uh, as family, we we kind of book some stuff, and we're gonna do it. And I hopefully that will be open. Uh, oh damn, dude! Just outside Kyoto, mm -hmm. um, kind of between Kyoto and Osaka is where it's at, and gonna do it i want to see the nintendo museum that's very cool i'm very excited for you um yeah so maybe there'll be a new switch by then and i'll be go traveling with the new switch no not no then. probably not <laughs> um maybe Does they'll have something that? there showing it off i don't know i wonder if we'll you know if it's coming out in fall which i agree with you when would they announce it i mean obviously they're not going to kill their holiday sales now but which holiday sales will they cannibalize <laughs> uh i think they announce it spring next yeah. year before okay. the end of the fiscal year yeah. Um, because they just want to let investors know that it's coming. But I, do you think? And that doesn't kill it really for the the summer and everything. They can be okay yeah. with that. Um, do you think they're gonna fuck it up and call it something other than Switch Two or radically change what the fucking thing is? Yes. Oh god. Well, I don't think they're gonna radically change, but I do think they'll do some dumb name. And oh, there are man. some worse things. Like I don't think they'll call it Switch Two. They never call things Two. Um, they don't exactly. So it's not going to be that. I really want Super Nintendo Switch. Uh, Super Nintendo Switch would be my um, the SNS. Um, mm -hmm. Or it will be the new Nintendo Switch. Oh my god, that would be what they would call it. <laughs> <laughs> Just think about all the 3DSs and like, yep. which one is this one? The new new three like new not three, new, as in... new Nintendo 3DS. XL. XL. Yeah. Please, God, just call it the Switch 2. Nope, they're not. They will not. Uh, I know they won't. They never I have. will take that bet. They will not call it 2, and I don't think you'd take that one. Um, Because it's no, Nintendo. They won't I would do not that. go again. No, no, no. I would not go <laughs> against you. Although, I will say that having seen them implement online well in a game makes me think, oh, is this a new Nintendo? No. Because <laughs> then they just put out their community things for Smash. Oh, so, my. no, it's not. Oh, the my new God. What a fucking... Wow. They're just like they don't want they do oh. not care or even really want fan smash tournaments. That's clear. Like they do not care. They don't think it's worth it. But how them. how can they stop me from doing a tournament? I bought the game. We have the uh, game. I mean, take them to court, find out. Or they'll take you to court and we'll find out. <laughs> Um, I just wonder how that holds up. Like, I'm running a tournament for... I'm running a soccer tournament. FIFA can't stop me from running a soccer tournament. No, because FIFA doesn't own soccer, though. They can probably stop you from using FIFA branded they can, things. For sh they can stop me from using the term FIFA. Yep. But if I used a ball that had the word FIFA on it... <laughs> I mean, I'd, I just, you know, I don't think FIFA would drill down to that far, I guess, and Nintendo yeah. wants to, so. Nintendo might. Um, it's bizarre to me. It really is bizarre. Yes. Um, I think people are going to, I just don't think they care and they're going to have that community anymore. Or they don't, they just, either the people there just don't get it or just don't care. Um I'm going to go with it. They just don't get it at all. I think that's true. They don't get it. Like, wait, why? This is a toy. What are you doing? <laughs> yeah, basically. Um, no, no, we don't want any of that drama. Yeah, pretty much. Um, but, oh boy, that's, but, that, but that if, was a fun. But if you do have a tournament within the confines of their agreement and you're allowed to, you can't yeah. sell food. You can't sell. Yeah. <laughs> you 
merchandise. Make, yeah, no. <laughs> nope. What the fuck? <laughs> weird Nintendo. They are they are real weird, that's for sure. Um But yeah. So you've been doing wonder. Yeah, what have you been doing? So what have I messed around with? Um Weirdly, it's gonna sound bizarre. I, I was like, fine, I'm gonna see what uh Diablo 4's latest season is like. Better mm-hmm. than the first season. Really? Okay. And a lot of the stuff that they actually changed. I'm like, okay, we're getting closer to the not the feel of Diablo 3, but the flow of Diablo 3 in like seasonal leveling. They gave a lot of you don't really have to keep redoing a whole lot. They kind of ne- reneged on all of that stuff. So it's like, okay, if you beat the campaign and you've collected all the statues of Lilith and stuff, yeah, you get all the benefits from that on any character you cre- create mm. going forward, season or not. So you don't have to go refine any bunch of shit. You don't have to do a bunch of side quests. Thank God. You can just play. Um, the Nightmare dungeon stuff feels a little bit closer to rifts now and how you move between them. Um, mm. You can just use a nightmare sigil, and it allows you just to teleport to the nightmare dungeon instead of having to teleport close to it and then ride there. And you can go from one nightmare dungeon to the next just by using sigils. So you don't can just be like running rifts in three. Mm-hmm. Um, and then the mechanic itself for the season is just better. Um, the vampire, it's a vampire thing, right? Yeah. Yeah, and there's like um, sections of the map that become get under. Uh, a blood tide basically. And there's like special content there um, mm, that's for you cool. to fight and stuff. And it's like lasts for like an hour in that zone. And when it finishes there, it moves someplace else. So there's like unique stuff you're getting there to trade in, to open chests in the area, to fight super, mo- super bosses, things like that. So there's actual, like a fun mechanic going on on there. And the vampiric powers are a lot easier to manage than the, the first seasons kind of stuff. Like there's a whole new equipment screen where you can have five different vampiric powers at once. Um, they give you all sorts of fun little special abilities. Like when you teleport, you become like a flock of bats. Um, oh, that's cool. And it does things while you're like that. And you can, you can do different things. So Are those things they're getting keep after the season or only, no, I think the... it's only during the season. Oh, okay. This mm-hmm. is just pure seasonal. Um, like three did with yeah. that. Mm-hmm. Um, so it got, it's better. It gives me hope that they will continue to improve. Um, and now that they're part of Microsoft and Codagon, maybe they can continue yeah, to improve without less, with less of the full-on pressures to monetize everything all the time. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm really sorry to anyone listening to this podcast with kids in the car and we got a little pornographic there, but yeah, Kodak is gone. Yeah. It's a little so, erotic. <laughs> so it's making me fi- feel like, okay... They are listening, and they mm-hmm. are trying to make the game better. Um, I will continue to check in on it from time to time. I don't think I'll continue playing. I've got to level 60. On the season? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I've done a bunch of... the. I've done the new story content that came with the season, which was fun. Um, and you have to beat the game in order to access the season, right? No. I don't nope. think you do. I think it's oh. there while you're going. I could be wrong, though. Okay. Um, I, you I just have to create thing. a seasonal character. Okay. Yeah, you just create a seasonal character. Since I've beaten the game, though, I can skip the campaign. Like, I can just say, I don't want the campaign to be part of oh, my game. Oh, so I can do a seasonal character, but do the campaign still. Yeah, as you're part of the it, seasonal character. It, I think this stuff will show up as you do okay. it. It may not just be accessible until Ooh. you reach certain points of the campaign. But... Yeah, exactly. What happens if I do a seasonal character and the season ends? Does that it just becomes an eternal character. It but just can... rolls in. It rolls into it. The character doesn't get deleted. That's what it I just, mean, yeah. Hmm. You just can continue doing whatever content's there. Like, okay. It just becomes a regular non-season character. Perfect. That's kind of what I meant. And that's what um, it's... That Diablo 3's characters did the same thing. Um, P- yeah, Path of Exile's touched, characters yeah. do the same thing. I just never touched seasons in Diablo 3. Um, but I have Diablo 4, and I haven't... I honestly forgot. Um, because, you know, Wonder came in, and I was getting excited yeah. for that. Um, I had also forgotten that I'd installed that, and as I installed that, uh, Halo Infinite Season sure. 5, I think, launched, and I played that for several nights and had a lot of fun. Um, they've introduced some different, at least to me, different um, game modes that are pretty fun. So anyway, that's an aside, but maybe I'll check out Diablo 4. Yeah, I mean, it's worth it. Um, I think it's generally better through the campaign. I still think it gets a little 
Like they haven't figured out the end game. It gets a little boring. Um, but if you hop off, if, if you're not an end game person, like I'm not really, like I would probably have a good time and be like, yeah, probably I, I'd I did make it. it through the story and be like, cool, done. Yep. Um, mm-hmm. and feel pretty good. Yeah. That's kind of uh, what I want to do um, before it came, you know, I'm like, what is it? The 24th of October. I'm like, okay, I have to play a certain amount of games before the end of the year. Cause I want to consider these things in my list. Um, but boy, time's ticking away. <laughs> Yeah, that's the problem with me, because um, there's still a chunk of ones that I want to consider that I'm like, I don't know when I'm going to get the time. Yes, exactly. Teaching Speaking. teaching overload in addition to all my um, leadership duties. I'm like, wow, that was the choice. It's the best class of my career. It's, uh, it's wild how great it's going, but it is a lot. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, yeah. So, so Devil 4, anything else? So have I done anything else? Um, I don't know. I've been doing a lot of planning for an RPG game I'm running. So that... oh, you, I saw some of the miniatures you're painting. Is it that one or a different? No, that's a that's a tabletop minis game. So I've been continuing to paint those and getting mm-hmm. those done, um, which I won't get to play tomorrow, which I normally would do. We're recording on Tuesday, and usually Wednesday nights now will be my time at the game store. But mm-hmm. kid stuff can't do it tomorrow night. So yeah. Um, wait another week. Um, I'll have more painted by then. So doing that, but then um, starting up another RPG game with um my friends, who I always did the Star Wars stuff with, um, pre-pandemic and right to the beginning of the pandemic. So I was excited to try a new game out. So I pitched to them, and they're like, "Let's go!" So we're doing it. So I'm making Very map, cool. maps and things like that. But Very it will cool. be an online game. <laughs> But yeah, that's been most of my focus. I'm trying to th- Steam have anything to install anything? No, I've been I've been pretty pretty light there. It's mostly was Diablo. Then we had in laws visiting this weekend, so I didn't get a chance to do a whole lot. Yeah, but I'm itching. I need to try Sea of Stars. <laughs> oh man, yes, please do, please do. <laughs> I'm interested. I'm interested to see what you think. Um, I need. Damn, I just smashed my microphone. Um, I need to get back to that. Um, I mean, I can get back to everything. I got back to Final Fantasy 16 this last week. Um, mm-hmm. And, yeah, it was exactly what I needed at that moment. I just wanted to watch a, a movie, basically. I was like, oh, maybe I'll try this and see if it does a lot of cuts. And you got a lot of movie. I got a lot of movie. And Dion is dope. <laughs> so Dion is such a good character. Honestly, all the characters in that game are really cool. Yeah. I love those characters. Um, Dion was especially... Especially a good character, incredibly well written. Oh, you're getting you're getting some fun spots in that game too. If you keep yeah, playing it's, it, it's good. I I will finish it before the end of the year. I'm in fits and starts right now. Yeah, um, yeah. Amongst everything else, and then kind of dropping everything game wise for uh, Mario Wonder. So no, that makes sense. Um, actually, do you know if Sea of Stars is on Game Pass? It is. It's on Game Pass. Uh, it's I'm on probably PS just Plus. gonna. I'm probably just gonna get Game Pass at some point. Yeah, renew, I don't, I don't, my, renew my thing for like a month mm-hmm. out of the out of this end of the year and just burn through a bunch of these games. Cocoon, Sea of Stars. Uh, that's another one I gotta get to is Cocoon. It's four hours, so it's not too long. And yeah, people at work seem to love it. Yes, so. the reviews are stellar. So, um, yeah, that's another one I want to have done before the end of the year. And I keep thinking, I keep reminding myself, uh, Fire Emblem Engage is what started this year. <laughs> I know, I know. Um, and I played the shit out of that game. Yeah, I feel like we'll need to do an episode where we just, before we pick our top fives or anything, mm-hmm. just go back through the year. What this year has actually been. Yes. Because it's insane. <laughs> and you know what else um, I would really like to do, and maybe you'd be interested in this, is we have, I definitely want to go through an episode where we're like, here's all that we played. Here's all that came out or whatever. I would love to do another episode where we do a top five of the games we didn't play. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because I know there's a there's Our a top whole... five ones that we want to play. Yes, that we didn't play it. <laughs> Just imagining which one would be on top of that list would be funny. Yeah. Um, um, I assume Armored Core 6 is something that's on your list eventually. Yeah, but... I don't know. It, there's parts that are interesting to me, and then there are people that are like, it punishes the hell out of you too. Uh, so yeah. I don't know if I'm... It might fall too close to the, the Dark Souls thing. Um, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But I really haven't paid any attention to it, really. I haven't seen any 
one stream it. I haven't seen anything on it. So I'm kind of in the dark. Just a couple things that people at work have said of being like, mm. oh, hit that first boss. That was a spike in difficulty. I'm yes, like, exactly. oh, no. <laughs> um, <laughs> It, uh, yeah, it came and it didn't like come and go people, it hit for people, but you know, it was just so much. Things, yeah, yeah. Things just moved and on Alan and Wake, on. Yeah. Alan Wake 2, any interest in that one for you? I'll watch it. There's yeah. no way in hell I'm playing that game. <laughs> I'm, I am very curious, especially like I've said before, now that it's part of the same universe control is in as mm-hmm. well. Like yeah. I am and Max Payne kind of, um, I am very, very curious what Remedy is doing there. Um, but there's no way in hell I'm playing that game. <laughs> the Remedy verse. Yeah, kind of. Um, so yeah, there's a lot of neat stuff to play with that. Alan Wake 2 is soon, right? Alan Wake 2 is this week. Friday? I yeah, I think that's right. Okay. Holy crap. So, so yeah. what a Why? <laughs> yep. Why? What? How? Just what? too much. Um, and then next Friday is Mario. Oh, God damn it, Wario Wear Move It, which is a small release. Sure, but, um, why not? I mean, my daughter saw the video. She's like, "Daddy, oh Daddy, no, can you please oh, play no. that game." Hey, I I did not. I I bought and then canceled my order of Hey Everybody One Two Switch or whatever. So then I was like, okay, something like that, but probably better is this. <laughs> so um, we're gonna we're gonna check it out. <laughs> There's too much too much good stuff. There is Mario RPG next month, man. Yep, Persona Ooh. Five Tactica is my thing. Persona I'm not, Five I'm not getting same day as Mario RPG. Oh, you should. Um, I think that's coming to Game Pass, isn't it? Yeah, but I want to own it. Uh, okay. Because I own every. Yes, everything that says Persona, Persona Five thing. So, Wait, do you own Persona Five Dancing All Night or whatever it's called? You're right. I don't. Never mind. So. <laughs> I need that. You have it, but I, I need. You have it. There's definitely oh. story in there, man. <laughs> oh, I know. I know. It's all. I'm like, What's they all contextualize here? all these side games as actual like yeah. story, but I will be getting Persona Five Tactica for PlayStation because that's where I have all my my trophies and everything for yeah. the other ones. Mm-hmm. So that makes sense. Even though I want it on the go, but trophies, man. Sometimes. Well, you could have it on the go because I forgot until this very moment that the portal is coming out. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> Um, although you can just hook up a fucking Bluetooth um, or whatever, a DS4 to your phone or whatever, DS5. That's true. I could also, that game's not going to be an action thing. I could actually probably just, I can remote play it on my PC. Oh, that too. Yeah, yeah, that too. So I don't have to worry about um, having to be in there late at night. And my kids are like, why are you, what are you doing? Mm-hmm. Keeping us up. And I'm like, playing games. And they're like, can we watch? No. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely not. Not. And they're like, they're old enough to give me crap. Um, yeah, that's a problem. Kids yeah. just should stop getting older. <laughs> yeah. Actually, you know what? No, that's not true. Keep going. <laughs> to a get certain to point. Co- certain yeah. point. Um, get to college. <laughs> Move on. But yeah, I think that's good for tonight. Like, yeah, I feel good. I feel good. That's a good podcast. Episode 404 of Prof and Dead Play I'll Games. I'll make sure like... not to post it. We'll never be found. Exactly. You just put it up there, but there's like just blank. <laughs> blank. Uh, if you like us, please rate us on your podcast podcast service of choice. Um, and we shall be back next week with more, um, I don't know, exhaustion at how many great games there are. Yeah. <laughs> too many. Yep. All right, folks. See ya. All right. Later, everyone.